Hello, my name is Christy Henshaw, and I am the Digital Production Manager at Welcome Collection. We're a museum and library in London, England, and we are part of the Welcome Trust, one of the largest private health research charities in the world. As part of the museum and library, my colleagues and I have made around 300,000 items from our collections freely available online. Open access is part of Welcome's overall mission and a key part of its grant funding aims to ensure better health outcomes on a global scale. And we're working hard to promote this ethos of Welcome Collection as well. I work in the digital engagement department and our mission is to design and build a free and unrestricted digital space. We want to inspire, engage and challenge people to think about what it means to be healthy and human. We participate in open culture by working to make our historic library archive and art collections freely available online. We also provide APIs for machine access to our data and develop our code in open source GitHub repositories. We use Creative Commons tools such as the public domain mark and open source licenses among others as standardized licenses support interoperability and compatibility with other collections. We are as transparent as we can be around what we do and how we do it publishing our policies, processes, documentation, and writing about our work and how we have developed our services. All of this means that users are able to find, access, and use our content with fewer barriers and less friction. And this makes it easier for them to learn, share their learning, to create and innovate. Using public domain or open licenses also makes it easier to disseminate our collections much further and reach a wider and more diverse audience via aggregators on an international scale, such as Wiki Commons and Internet Archive, on a national scale, such as Art UK, or on a more targeted thematic level, such as the Digital Transgender Archive or Biblisma. This basically means we're able to reach more people in a more equitable fashion. Barriers. Barriers exist for so many reasons, financial incentives, resource limitations, or a fear of some kind of loss of reputation or control, just to name a few. At Welcome, the barriers we experience now are mostly due to the scale of the collection and the technological complexities in making everything open. We have a lot of collections that are in copyright or include personal data, and we have to ensure that we protect the creators and subjects of this material from unauthorized access or use. We have complex collections that are simply tricky to make available online for technological reasons, um, and we've worked over the years to make our collections more and more open, and not by just creating digital content that can be made available more widely than, for example, the physical items, and developing technology to make it possible, but also by revising our policies. We haven't always been as open as we are now. Not that long ago, it wasn't that common for GLAM organizations, that's galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, to make their collections available under open licenses. If they did, it was often only thumbnails or small numbers of items. We were the same originally. When we started thinking about opening things up even more, there was a fear that we would lose our users. Maybe they'd take the stuff and be off with it, never to return. Or they might use it without acknowledging us, and therefore all the hard work that we put into making it available in the first place would be lost. That the context would be lost, maybe images, videos floating around out there, without all the carefully crafted descriptions that we've written to place them in some kind of context. But what we found as we've opened up our collections more and more uh, is that we became more well-known and more of a destination. So access to our online collections constantly grows, even though most of our content is out in the world now as public domain or openly licensed and available via multiple sources, as I mentioned earlier. Most users are actually pretty well aware of how to credit content, how to make, and they do make an effort to do so. Most of the time, serious users are keen to include context. They provide source information and they treat the content and us with a level of respect. You can't always guarantee it, but this is the experience that we have had. So what have I learned uh, in my time at Welcome? 
Well, on a personal level, what I've learned is that you can't go open without risk. If you want to eliminate risk, it is just, just not compatible with providing broad access to content and data. And so you need, do need to consider those risks very carefully. You need to consider them in order to understand how to reduce them or you know, where you need to avoid certain things, but also so you can actually really judge where the risk lies. So for example, you might have an idea that content will be immediately monetized as soon as you let it loose, taking advantage of your hard work. But think about the actual risks with that. What sort of content are we talking about? How likely is it really that it's going to happen? And if someone were to make that t-shirt or print copies of that book for resale or, or many, many other things that someone might wanna do, what is the impact on you and your users really? Is that risk worth blocking access to many more legitimate uses? And is commercial use even a problem? Or is it actually just one more benefit that you're providing and maybe actually happy to provide to the economy? So this kind of exploitation may have a big negative impact in some cases, depending on your situation, the type of content, and you know, where you're positioned as an organization. But it may have little to none in others. So just sit down, think about it. It may be some of the risks aren't actually where you need to focus your energy. There's just This is just one example of many. But I just wanted to say that going open doesn't mean throwing all caution to the wind. It does go hand in hand with a good understanding of the risks and the benefits. So if you aren't yet making your content open, I guess here is what I would say. Consider how your users and your institution could benefit from broadening access. And what are the risks if you do continue restricting access? Consider where you can go open today versus where you need more information or more consideration before you can make that decision. And if you're seeing the potential to going open, start making content open as you go, step by step. Test the waters out, see what happens, if you can. If it's technical limitations rather than policy decisions that are holding you back, well, yeah, that's not easy. Um, building all that infrastructure, it's time consuming and expensive. But you could consider making use of aggregators that host content for free, such as Wiki Commons, Antenna Archive, Europeana, and others. It's relatively low effort to put images and other media up on these sites, and you can start to see the benefits of open access pretty quickly. You can link to them from your catalog. You can create online experiences using the content hosted on these sites. So you can start to experiment and see how going open works for you. So I would say just try it out. 